have a better question. Who is excited for what God's doing in America? And you want to know a secret real quick? You already look like a crazy Christian, so you might as well go all in tonight. You're outside, people looking at you. You already look crazy. You might as well give it all you got. You know, just under a year ago, I'm standing right here in this exact spot with my team. Just under a year ago. And you want to know what happened? 400 people showed up just like this tonight. But you know what's even more important than that? We had five-year-old children weeping, giving their life to Jesus right here on this very ground. We had people walking on the boardwalk like some people tonight. And they came up to me and they said, Ross, I'm drug addicted. I'm alcohol addicted. I don't know what to do with my life. How do I get saved? You know what that person did after they got saved? They stood up, they looked at their wife face to face and repented for everything in their marriage they had done wrong to one another. I'm here to tell you tonight that if God can do it once, he's definitely going to do it again. But here's the reality. I said, Lord, what do you want to speak tonight? What is your word for those who are going to hear this tonight? And he said, Ross, faith. I said, faith. And then every person has heard that word before. He said, no, 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 I'm not talking about the cute type of faith. I'm not talking about the faith sticker that you have on your bumper. Praise God if you have it. I'm talking about the faith that shakes. It shakes the devil. It shakes the ground. It shakes circumstances. It shakes families, cities, and nations. And you'll be saying, Ross, man, you're a really good preacher. You're hyping me up. Uh-uh, it's in the scripture. In Hebrews 11. It talks about the great men of faith, the fathers of our faith as believers. You know what it says about their faith? It says their faith overthrew kingdoms. By their faith, they received the promises of God. They quenched the flames of fire. They escaped death. And it says their weaknesses were turned to strengths. And not only that. It says they put whole armies to flight. And I'm here tonight to tell you one thing and one thing very clearly. Hear me out. This can transform and shift your entire life right now. I'm not here for games. If you're on your phone, put it down. If you can hear my voice, give me 10 seconds. That type of faith is the faith you need in this world from here on out. Any other type of faith, you will not survive. If we learn anything in the last two years, it's without true faith, you're going to go under. And tonight, God has something for you. When I say for you, I mean personally you. Not just the person next to you, you. Because when you personalize things, that's the only way to receive what God has for you. If it's not personal, you'll walk out of here the same way you walked in. But tonight, I can already see it on people, and I want to call people out already, but I'm going to hold back. Faith is rising on your heart right now. And it's not because I have a good gift here. You are feeling the presence of the living God. For some of you, it's the first time. For some of you, it's a thousand times. But my challenge to you tonight is to not walk out of here without receiving what God has for your life. And so here's how I'm going to say it tonight. Many times, if you've been around the church or if you haven't, we say things like, close your eyes, raise your hands. I'm not against that. But in this season of the world, you have to know what decision you're making with boldness. You can't let the person next to you dictate your life any longer. I do not have a decision what you do with your heart, your destiny, your life, your soul. Your church doesn't. Your mom doesn't. Your brother doesn't. Your wife or husband doesn't. You have a choice what you do with your life. You might be saying, man, Ross, I don't even know you. You're coming off hot, the, hot off the bat. You're right, I am. Because I will no longer let my generation go down the drain. You see, for me, I shared this last night and I feel the Lord on it. I was born by artificial insemination. I grew up in a lesbian household with two moms. I never heard the name of Jesus my entire life. I never went to church. When I encounter the Holy Spirit, what's going to happen right now, it will shift and mark your life forever. The pleasures of the world will die to you. You will have real identity, real destiny, and real hope for the first time in your life. And here's the final thing I want to say. Two things. You cannot receive the promises of God without faith. 
And faith is a word that is backed up and it's rooted to action. Without action, there is no faith. Faith without works is what? Dead. And so tonight, with every eye open, with every person able to see you tonight, I'm going to call you in a few seconds here to come forward. You see this right here? It looks like concrete to you. You're wrong. It's an altar of the living God. For the last 11 months as I've traveled California, every person that comes up here has an encounter with the real God. Not religion, not church, a real deal encounter with God. If you don't believe me, come test it tonight. That is called faith. And so when I say three, if that is you tonight, I want you to be so bold. Do not walk out of here. Every person that doesn't respond regrets it when they get in that car and go home. I am challenging. You might not know me. I might not know you. But here's one thing I do know. God loves you. And he wants to use your life. Not only does he want to set you free, he wants to set you on fire. One. You might be saying, Ross, I just came here for your cute night. God isn't into cute nights. He's into the spirit of the living God. He's on the spirit of movement. Two. Every single voice right now from around you and inside of you is going to tell you don't come up here. It's going to tell you, no, he's just lying. Nothing's going to happen. That is an absolute lie from the pit of hell. It says in the scripture that the godly never go hungry. If you're hungry tonight spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, God will meet you right here on this altar. Three, if that's you, come up here right now. I want you to get on your knees right here. Come on, get on your knees. Praise God. Come on, church, celebrate, celebrate. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. If you're coming up here, close your eyes. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Close your eyes and lift your hands right now. We're going to wait 10 seconds. Don't, don't even focus on me. Close your eyes. The Lord's already touching people. People are weeping already. I see the power of the Holy Spirit moving on hearts, minds, families. Listen, there's four more people and you need to come up here. I see you. Don't make me call you out. It's happened before. If you need to come up here, come up here right now. I'm not one of those preachers that moves on. I'll wait till you come up. I got all day, as a matter of fact. If you're up here, just close your eyes. Yep, there's two more. I see you. Two more. Two more. Where you at? Yep, if you're up here, just keep fix your eyes on Jesus. Just fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't even worry about what I'm saying right now. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes. Stay focused. Lord. Everything's good. Stay focused. I'm going to pray right now. If you need to come up here, get on your knees. I'm not telling you to get on your knees so I look cool. It's a posture of your heart towards God. So if you can, I'm going to ask you to get on your knees. Thank you, Jesus. Yep, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord's still moving. I'm not, I'm not going to rush this moment. I see more people. Yeah, bless you. Bless you. I'm just going to pray real quick, just the two, just the two. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would fill every person with fresh faith right now. The faith to overcome every obstacle of the enemy. The faith to overcome every single area that you break through in. I declare this over your family over your health, over your body, over your mind, over every circumstance in your life. Listen, I feel the Lord saying right now, even if you're not feeling an emotion, it's not an emotional moment.